Hey guys, it's Ryan the Bugman, and I'm coming to you from Bugman headquarters right here in the studio. Today, we're going to talk about giant silk moths. These guys right here. How cool is he? Now look, if you don't know me, my name is Ryan Bridge. People call me the Bugman. They call me the Bugman because I go to schools, churches, libraries, birthday parties, all kinds of cool places. And what I do, I bring a ton of cool bug fun to you. All right, here we're in the studio and we are going to be focusing on giant silk moths. These are awesome, awesome moths. And they sleep all day and they fly all night and they live right in your backyards and in your neighborhoods all summer long. They're common, they're harmless, they don't hurt anybody, they feed the food chain and that's their job. The largest moths coming out of the United States and in many cases all over the world Giant silk moths are the coolest. And look how beautiful they are. This is a male. Check out those antennas. He is an insect. Remember, insects, six, three, two. Six legs, three main body parts, two antenna. This male, Cecropia moth, has those big feathery antenna. And that helps him to smell for the females. That helps him because that, you know what he does? He goes out and flies into the wind. And as he flies into the wind, he's going to pick up a pheromone. Female moths put out a pheromone. It's like perfume. And they send that and waft that into the wind. And it's molecular. So we can't smell it, but they can. And he's going to pick up that smell with those big antenna. And, it's, and the, the more that smells, the harder that smell gets, the stronger that smell gets the closer he is to that female moth. If he goes past her, well then he loses that smell. And he realizes he has to turn back around, come into the wind, and fly into the wind again in order to find her. When he finds her, they're gonna mate. And they're gonna mate from anywhere from about three hours up to sometimes two full days. But when they finish, he gets to leave. He clocks out and he goes and he flies around and he'll live for about two weeks. Male, the giant silk moths, they live for about two weeks. And they can take on several females during that time. The female moths only have about four days to survive. On average, wild giant silk moths are only going to live about four days. They mate, they lay their eggs, and they die because their job, once again, is to feed the food chain. And that's what they're doing. The only reason they even have wings is to go out and find mates. Because these giant silk moths, they don't even eat as adults. They live off what they had as a caterpillar. They have no mouth. They have no ability to eat as an adult, just as a caterpillar. So the only reason they're out there flying in your backyards is they're hunting down and looking for mates because that's what they do. Look how beautiful that moth is. To think these things are in your backyards, cruising there every night, is just awesome. I love these things. Cecropia moths are the coolest largest moth in the U.S. These are just amazing. Can I can never get tired of these things. Favorite moth right there, guys, hands down. All right, now, cool. Let me show you one more that I think is also really, really cool. And I think you'll like these too. This is a Luna moth. Look at that moth. That is the Luna moth. Notice the tails. The tails are important. These moths are going to go out and they're going to fly around. And those tails come in real handy because when bats come in to try to eat this moth, those tails are going to break up that sonar, those, that sonar image. They're also going to make it tough for the bat to come in and eat the moth because they're going to hit him and smack him and confuse him. And that helps this moth stay alive another day. This particular moth is a female. Doesn't have nearly the big feathery antenna, so this particular moth is a female. Now, these female moths, depending on size, they're gonna lay anywhere from about 700 to 1,200 eggs. That is a lot of food chain being fed because most of those caterpillars are probably gonna get eaten by something. A couple are gonna survive and get through the day. Now, those caterpillars can come in some amazing, just totally amazing designs. The Cecropia caterpillar is so is one you guys can and you know watch for these because remember they're common, they just they they fly at night so people don't realize they're there. But the caterpillars are feeding in your trees and they're feeding on your willows, they're feeding on your your 
your maples, they're feeding on your cherries. You know, a lot of the common trees that we have in our neighborhoods are full of caterpillars all summer long that are eating those leaves. And these giant silk moths, they're there. We just don't see them. So keep your eyes peeled in the summertime for these large caterpillars. That's a cropium moth caterpillar. Look at that. Look at how awesome of a caterpillar is that. Those tubercles on that, they're completely harmless. They do have the ability to scratch you, scrape you, maybe bump you. There might be people that are allergic to those kinds of things, but the, the caterpillars are harmless. They don't bite. They don't sting in the outright sense. The Luna Moth Caterpillar is another good one. It looks like a big green worm, but look look at that. Just an outstanding. And then we have another one that you can find a little bit later in the year. A lot of people find the Imperial Moth Caterpillars. And this is an outstanding caterpillar. It comes in three different color forms, man. How cool is that? All right, so you get it, man. You're talking about moths that are cruising your backyards all summer long, that are eating the trees in your neighborhoods all summer long, and most people don't even know these things are there. Now, eventually, these caterpillars are gonna have to make cocoons, and we're gonna take a look at cocoons. And these are cocoons. Now, just like insects, cocoons are gonna come in all shapes, all sizes, all colors. And we have three different types of cocoons going on here. We've got a Luna cocoon, we have a Promethea cocoon, and then that is an Atlas moth cocoon. How neat is that? All shapes, all sizes, all colors. And look, I'm not gonna kid you when I tell you these things can be big. These things come in all shapes, all sizes, without a doubt. But you notice there's even leaves attached to some of these. Most of the cocoons are wrapped within a leaf. And you can actually see the leaf still attached to the, this Promethea cocoon. Very neat. And then they attach it with silk up here onto the stem. And these things are super easy to find and collect in the wintertime because they're some of the only things hanging in the trees. Hit them right in the sun and they glow like a light bulb. They reflect the sunlight. But check this out. Once that leaf falls off in the, in the, in the wintertime, that leaf is going to weather off. And you're going to be looking at just what is left is a silken cocoon. And this is like a sleeping bag. Think about this. If you're going to stay in these cocoons all winter long, because most moths do that, you need a way to protect yourself from the frost and from the ice and from predators because birds and animals are going to break into these cocoons to get to the pupa inside, the chrysalis that's inside. Butterflies and moths both have a chrysalis. Most moths put their chrysalis inside the cocoon in order to protect it during the winter time. Neat stuff. Now, these cocoons are gonna keep these bugs protected, but what is actually inside the cocoon? Let's look at a Cecropia moth cocoon. Here's the Cecropia moth, that really cool red-brown one I showed you earlier. And inside the Cecropia moth cocoon will be the chrysalis. And the chrysalis is also known as a pupa. Also notice that there is a secondary chamber inside. See that? There's two chambers in here. There's an outside layer, and then there's an air pocket and an inside layer that actually holds the chrysalis or the pupa. The thing down here at the end, that's the old shed caterpillar skin. So after the caterpillar builds the cocoon, it has to shed its skin one last time, and that reveals the chrysalis. Now, that chrysalis already has the wings and the antenna already set up and ready to go. It just needs to buy its time, wait till it gets to emerge, expand the wings, and fly away. And that is what the inside of a cocoon looks like. How cool is that? So the moth is already ready to go. It just has to buy its time and wait for that enzyme to leave the brain to tell the moth that it is time to emerge. And you get into the 60s and 70s, 
But you know, a couple nights of 60 and 70 degrees will usually trigger the majority of these cocoons to hatch. Certain cocoons are hatching earlier than others. But it's still neat to see that. Now, not all moths are going to make cocoons. Because, you know, not all moths fly during the nighttime either. There's a lot of moths out there flying around during the daytime. But not all moths are going to make these cocoons. There's a particular moth I want to talk about. I already mentioned one, the Imperial. But I want to talk about another one that pupates underground. That's the Regal moths. And these are all Regal moth pupa. These are chrysalis. The caterpillar burrows under the ground and then creates its pupa under the ground. Look how big these are. This is another one of these moths that get really, really big. Oh, there he moves, see that? That tells you he's alive, that's cool. I can get him to do that again, that'd be neat. There he goes, he's moving around, how neat is that? So this is one that is without a doubt still alive and healthy and he's probably gonna hatch into a really nice regal moth. And we're gonna take a look at the regal moth in a minute but i do want to point out to you that there are moths out there that are going to pupate or build their cocoons if you will they don't use the silk and the leaves they just burrow under the ground and create their chrysalis under the ground and that way they stay protected from the frost and from the ice and the snow and the predators don't know they're there either and that's what keeps them alive one more day how cool is that let's go take a look at the regal moth and there it is that's the regal moth guys this is not a small moth these things get up to about five and a half or six inches across sometimes this is a really nice female and look there's the chrysalis the pupa right next to her but these are outstanding moths and you're gonna see these they're not always as common as some of the other large silk moths are but they're still an amazing moth and they're, they're referred to as regal moths. The caterpillar of the regal moth is referred to as the hickory horned devil. And check out the hickory horned devil. Now, the cecropia moth is my favorite moth, but the hickory horned devil is by all means my favorite caterpillar. They are just unbelievable and amazing caterpillars. And keep in mind, guys, they live in your neighborhoods, probably in your backyards. They're here. And people find these things and will send me pictures of these things absolutely freaking out. They're totally, completely harmless. They don't hurt anybody. Those big spines on the head, and the, they're just an amazing caterpillar. The caterpillars themselves can get up to almost seven inches long at times. They are a massive caterpillar. They're going to be our largest caterpillars here in North America. Just a phenomenal caterpillar and a phenomenal moth in general. Coming back here to the adult regal moth. So there you go, man. Very, very cool stuff. Now, we have a lot of other things going on. Check this box out. This is a box of North American moths. Uh, specifically, everything in this box is to the eastern U.S. So if you live east of the Mississippi, you can pretty well expect to see almost all this stuff. And I'll show you a couple other ones here in a minute. But these are all moths that are pretty neat. Look, remember I mentioned the imperial moth larva? Right there is the imperial moth itself. Now, there's a couple in here I want to point out. These are hawk moths, specifically tomato and tobacco hornworms. Now, not a silk moth, but those big green worms you get in your tomatoes turn into these. And yeah, most people don't appreciate those, but guess what? They pupate underground just like the regal moth. They're gonna pupate underground, and because of that, they're waiting in your garden for next year's tomatoes every season. So. Pretty neat stuff, but they're okay. They're not the big pests we like to make them out to be unless you, you know, I don't mind my tomatoes getting munched on by these guys. I think they're pretty cool. There's one in here that even flies during the day. This is the buck moth. Beautiful moths, they fly during the daytime in September, sometimes is you know, going into October. And there's another notable one here. That is the 
IO Moth because check out the fake eye spots on the IO Moth. This is a female. And man, if that isn't going to do the job to chase away predators, I don't know what would. But there's a bigger one. There's the Polyphemus. And the Polyphemus Silk Moth is the most notable. People almost always remember, much like the Luna Moth, people always remember their first Polyphemus because of these large fake eye spots. The whole point of those is to chase away predators. And I've seen that in action. I watched a sparrow one day at a gas station picking on a Polyphemus Moth that was laying on the ground. And it was messing with it because it was interested, probably trying to figure out if it was something edible or not. And when it disturbed the moth, because this was during the daytime, it disturbed the moth. The moth opened up its wings and exposed these big fake eye spots. And that freaked out that sparrow. He pecked at one of the eyes and then he flew away. He could have grabbed the moth and flown away with a moth and had a great meal to work for it. But these fake eyeballs, that's nature's way of keeping these moths alive one more day. We have another one that's kind of notable, that's neat. And this, this is a Promethea. That's the cocoon I showed you earlier. And the Promethea, this is a female, beautiful moth. These fly during the afternoon, almost evening, about the, anywhere from 2.30 to, to 4.30 in the afternoon. So they're not a nighttime flyer, they're a daytime flyer. I don't have a picture of the male, but the male looks much like that right there, and that's a Securifer. But, outstanding moths. And if you live east of the Mississippi, you can pretty well expect to see all of these really cool moths in your backyards, in your neighborhoods. Now, west of the Mississippi, yeah. West of the Mississippi, you're looking at these guys right here. And these are some cool. Here's your two probably most caught and the popular ones are the Glover, the Glovery and, and, and the Uralis. And just amazing. They look a lot like the Cecropia, but they're not, obviously, and they don't get quite as big as our Cecropias here in the east. But if you live west of the Mississippi, you can expect to see these pretty common. You can also expect to see these right here. And the Coletta is a beautiful moth. And then there's hybrids. Did you know that these guys right here will hybrid? They'll mate and create this kind of stuff right here, which is neat. And there's people that have taken the Eastern Cecropia moth and mated it with some of these and created some really weird but beautiful hybrids in the process. Now, two other notable ones back in the East. That's the Securifera. It's sort of a sort of a weird crossover between the Promethea and the tulip tree. And this occurs down south, all the way down into Louisiana. And it's an amazing moth too. So it's called the Sweet Bay Silk Moth. I've seen them in Florida a bunch of times. And they come out early in the year down south and sometimes in huge numbers. Now, a real notable one is the Cynthia. This moth was brought into the US years and years ago for the silk industry, it's now considered super rare. It's not extinct because every now and then these things still pop up. But it's probably extirpated from the majority of its range now. They're just very hard to find. This particular female was wild caught many years ago. I collected this female in Lancaster County flying around a light. And at the time I was just a kid. I had no idea what I, you know, I had no idea what it was I had. And unfortunately I killed it before I let it mate and lay eggs, it was probably already gravid. I kind of probably just let it lay the eggs and I probably could have reared out a whole bunch of those things. But I was happy to get the moth. It was the first one I'd ever seen. And as it turns out, I've only ever seen maybe two or three of these in my lifetime alive. So that is pretty cool. Now, hey, remember the Luna Moth. Remember the Luna Moth with its long tails. Those tails are protecting it from the birds and the bats and different things. Breaks up the bat sonar image. Very cool stuff. That's nature staying alive one more day. If you go to the tropics where it's a predator-rich environment, tails are the name of the game. Look at these moths coming out of Malaysia and Africa and Asia. And look at the tails on these moths. 
amazing because these males now that's a female right there but these males are going to go out and fly around hunting down the females using the pheromone and they're going to track those females and they need that added protection so they have these super long tails to distract and hit and confuse the bats that are going to come in and try to eat them and look fake eye spots all over the place because during the daytime when these moths are resting they're going to rest with the wings open and flat like this. And that is going to show off those fake eye spots. Look at that. Isn't that cool? What a neat looking face. But tails are keeping these moths alive one more day. Everything about insects is about surviving, guys. Nothing I'm showing you is going to hurt you, sting you, hurt you, know, bite you, kill you. They're all totally harmless moths. These are some of my favorites. I like to note on these. These are Rothschildia. This one's an Orzaba, and I'm not sure. I forget what this other one is called. Uh, I only I have like three or four of these in the collection. I, I forget what it's called. But look, at this is these are not the same species. These are two different species, but they're in the same family of Rothschildia. And these are really cool because they look like a miniature atlas moth. And we're going to look at atlas moths in a minute. If you remember the mounting workshop I did, I mounted up an atlas moth. And this looks like a miniature one. Only thing it's missing are the... The wingtips, which I'll show you. But look at that. How awesome is that moth? And look at the variability on it. it has the clear spots are all stretched out. The wingtips are stretched out. Just a neat looking moth. Outstanding. And then we can get into the Loxotomas. And Loxotomias are very cool. Every time I'd see these in books as a kid, not realizing I would eventually go get to see them alive. You saw these in books as a kid. I always thought that looked like logs. It always reminded me of, of mimicking or, or trying to look like camouflage, like logs or something. But look at the coloration on these moths. How can you not appreciate that? That is just very cool. Let's get into size here real quick because everybody understands the bigger you are, the longer you survive. You know, less bullies are picking on you. And if you can be the largest moths in the world, which these aren't yet, but they're one of the largest moths in the world. These are the Atlas moths. Unbelievable. We're talking eight, nine, ten inch wingspans right here, guys. We're talking some very large moths. Look, man, that's my hand up against these things. These things are huge. And check out the wingtips. How can you not appreciate a moth that looks like a snake? If you come from an area that has cobras, that's a neat way to survive another day. If you have a wingtip that looks like a cobra's head, or any snake if you really want to think about it in general terms, and look, the bright red colors, now you look like a bright red snake, which means you're probably venomous or dangerous in some way, shape, or form because that's how nature identifies a lot of those snakes. It gives them those bright reds and oranges. And atlas moths come in different shapes and sizes too. Look at the wingtips on that one. It looks almost like a, almost like a three-quarter profile of a lizard or a, a snake. But either way, they have those wingtips because that helps these moths to stay alive. This is what a moth looks like when it first comes out of the cocoon. A lot of these were reared, obviously. The wings are shriveled. They have to push blood into the veins and expand the wings out. And they unfold and unfurl, almost like a flag, to get those wings to come out. Just amazing insects. This one is not an actual atlas moth, but it looks like them, so I tossed it in there just for good looks. This guy comes out of Cameroon, but he's, a, he's one of the large silk moths coming out of Cameroon in Africa. Now, let's get to the largest in the world, because it just keeps getting better. These are the Hercules moths. Hercules moths are coming out of Malaysia. So where they come from, there aren't cobras. So ironically, weirdly enough, look, no snake heads. Because if you're, you know, if you're going to try and mimic something that's not even in your range, well, that's not going to help you any, because predators aren't going to recognize it. And therefore, guess what? They're going to eat you anyway. But you still have to sit around, put out your pheromone, and wait for the boys to show up. And while the boys are flying to come find you, guess what? Bats are going to try and eat them. And now they have the tails to keep themselves alive. One more day. So nature is working in every way it can 
to keep insects alive one more day. Curious the size of these things? Watch this. My hand is on the pin. This moth is bigger than my hand. That's how big that moth is. Very cool. So you get it, man. Large silk moths worldwide. They live in your backyards. They live in your neighborhoods. They can be way different and vary a lot. They can be camouflaged. They can be bright and showy and have long tails. But they're going to be in your yards and in your neighborhoods all summer long. You know what, man? You put up lights, you can do that. You can find out what kind of moths are living in your backyard. That's a great thing to do for family. Kids love staying up late, and that's a good excuse to let them. So there you are, guys. The giant silk moths coming to a neighborhood near you. They sh they're probably already hatching out now. Mine are. So yours should be emerging from those cocoons anytime now. And you can find these things, guys. Don't be afraid of them when you see them. They're not going to bite you. They're not going to sting you. Remember, they don't even have a mouth. The adults can't even feed. So there's no way they're going to hurt you. They're just a cool insect trying to live another day. Giant soap moths. Just doesn't get any better than that. The Cecropia moth is my favorite. I can never, ever get bored of these things. Guys, if you like what you see here, if you like what I'm doing, then you need to, you need to, Show me that. Talk to me about that. Get me your questions every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. You know what? Hit me over there on YouTube as well. I got a lot of really cool content, some good stuff over on YouTube that you don't see over here. And sometimes I'll push stuff over to Facebook as well. But if you really want to catch up on some of the other stuff I'm up to, go over to YouTube. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. You know what? Just tap the button. Let me know you like what you see. And that way I know to keep pushing that kind of content over there because I don't want to put stuff over that you don't want to see either. Keep the questions coming too, man. Very important. Those questions are helping me to build these programs. All right, this is a cool program. And I had several requests to talk about the large moths. We're eventually going to get into black lighting. We're eventually going to get into some field trips. I'm going to take you guys on some field trips with me. It is going to be tons of cool bug fun. All of that is coming your way eventually when we get a little warmer. It's still a little, a little early in the year yet. All right, guys, hey, I just want to get out of here. We're running out of time. I got to check out. I want you guys to be well. I want you to be safe. And please, man, let's be kind. We need, we need, a, it's an angry world. We need to be kind to everybody out there. All right, folks, I appreciate you. I love you. Thanks for doing this with me. I couldn't do this without you. All right, guys, I'll give you back your day. Have a great day. Take care.